question has to, to do with um, Ezekiel beginning in chapter 40. And, uh, it does, or makes an elaborate description of a temple, which I don't think aligns with anything that has existed on earth so far. Um, so I just want to know, my question is, is this, a, is this a future temple on earth, or is it heavenly, or is it something else? That is a great question. Uh, yes, it's future. No, it's not heavenly. Uh, but it does blend into the heavenly. And, and uh, just to show you, and, and again, I would love to come back to all these, but if you look, uh, starting in Ezekiel 36, 37, 38, you see a progression going on. Uh, in chapter 37 is the, the entire coming alive of the dry bones and then of Israel. And then in 38 and 39, they're attacked uh, by a horde of enemies, and it names... I mean, Iran, Persia is named in there, as well as uh, a lot of other of the uh, Turkey um, and the, the uh, Central Asian nations, uh, Muslim nations are named. And immediately after that, God decimates them and destroys them. And uh, in fact, uh, it says that uh, five-sixths of the army, that's a, that's a pretty decimation, five-sixths, that's 80%. Uh, of the armies that come against Israel are destroyed on the mountains of Israel. It says uh, in the, the Gog and Magog section here. And immediately after that happens, this happens. So it is certainly, there's never been an army that has marched on Israel in history from the north that 80% of them were killed on the mountains that included Persia uh, and all the other countries. And then after all of that, this future point most likely corresponds with what Revelation 20 six times says, 1,000 years. So when we come back, uh, uh, when I don't answer these in a short way, we'll actually read all these verses. Now this is a great question. And this one is timely. This one is in the news. And so I, I um, pulled up a few um, illustrations. Let's go to Ezekiel. And for most of us, it's a rarity to go to Ezekiel. Uh, but whenever we're going to Ezekiel, I mean, unless you're in the, uh, among the 653 Read Through the Bible Club people, and you're going to get through Ezekiel. Uh, but, but what about Ezekiel 40 to 48? It's a puzzling passage because so many things happen there. For example, there's a temple, and so immediately you say, is this literal or not? There are sacrifices, so immediately the people that uh, think there's no future for Israel immediately say this could not mean what it says. It's got to be figurative or it's got to be allegorical or something. But before we look at Ezekiel 40 to 48, you have to actually look at the context. Remember the king of inter proper interpretation is context. I mean, you've got to always look at who was it written to and what did it mean uh, when it was written and, and uh, set the frame? And so, basically, if you look at Ezekiel 36 and 37, before we get to 40, it says, uh, the, the whole 36th chapter, I mean, look, look at uh, verse 8, uh, the, the mountains of Israel, you shall shoot forth your branches and yield your fruit, my people Israel, for they are about to come. And then it talks about the... the the returning of them, and then in starting in verse 9, I am for you, I will turn to you, you'll be tilled and sown. And so the Lord is talking about, and look at verse 10, something about rebuilt cities and all that. And so what 36 is talking about is some type of um, promised, I mean, no matter what, I mean, no matter where you are in the millennial views, Presbyterians, Calvinists, which is amillennial, or you know, evangelicals that are dispensational that believe in the millennium, no matter what you say, this is, I mean, what your frame of thought is, it's, they're returning in verse 8, they're being restored in verses 9 through 15, and in verse 16, they start, they start being renewed spiritually. Uh, and in verse 19, it says in chapter 36, I scattered them among the nations, and they were dispersed throughout the countries, and I judged them. And that's, that's talking about this whole promise of, you know, that's in Leviticus, that if they sinned, 
they're going to be, you know, spread all over the world. Now you get to 37, and something else interesting happens. Israel is regathered, and, and look what it says in, um, it's this vision of dry bones in verse 1. He set me down, uh, and, and, or the hand of the Lord came upon me and brought me in the sphere of the Lord and set me down in the midst of a valley, and it was full of, of bones. And uh, they are dry bones in verse 4. And in verse 5, I will cause breath to enter on them. And verse 6, and then you shall know that I am the Lord. By the way, uh, Ezekiel 37, 6 is the 52nd time that phrase is in the book. Did you catch the phrase, what it says? And then you shall know that I am the Lord. Do you know what the whole book of Ezekiel is about? Then you shall know that I am the Lord. Anytime God repeats himself 52 times, the same phrase, and it, go, it goes all the way to the end of the book. Did you know the whole book of Ezekiel is God saying, I'm going to show the whole world that I'm God. You know what's interesting, what's going on right now? The world is poised to look at who is the Lord. This is, this is the generation we're living in. And what's going on right now in Syria and Iraq is a whole part of this. Who is the Lord? Is it Allah? Or is it Yahweh? Who calls himself the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and he calls his son the son of David. He's very connected to the Jewish people. This one. He's connected. Everything about God is in the scriptures, is Jewish, even the eternal city. It's called Jerusalem. It has gates that have the names of the 12 tribes of Israel, not Ishmael. You understand what I mean? The, he had 12 prophets. All of them are Armenian mean, apostles. They're all Jewish. Every word of this book came through Jewish apostles and prophets or under their tutelage, on and on and on. And we are in this climactic time when there are the fastest growing number of people are followers of Allah. And the Lord says, look back at, at chapter 37 and verse 6, but I'm going to do something that's going to make all the world know that I'm the Lord. And what are you going to do there? Well, look at verse 12 of chapter 37. I mean... This, this is a kind of fun reading. Are Ezekiel 36 and 37 literal? That's a good question. Of course, I believe they are. I believe that the people reading it didn't think that the Lord was talking about the church at all or some allegorical anything. I will open your graves, verse 12 says, and cause you to come up from your graves and bring you into the land of Israel. Bring you up out of graves. That is so fascinating. If we're actually living in the end, that's talking about Israel coming out of the death camps. I mean, those people, did you know that when you were in Auschwitz, if you survived it and they didn't gas you and burn you, did you know that those smokestacks in Dachau and all the rest of them, that, that they were so burning so many bodies in those crematoriums that they didn't have the EPA to filter all that stuff, that the soot and ashes of hundreds of thousands of burned bodies were falling like dust. Did you know that if, if you look at the pictures, a lot of those people that were liberated by the Allies, they had actually dust on them from being outside in this, this smoke from the crematoriums. They actually had the dust from the bodies of their own countrymen and women that, and children that were burned. It's amazing. And the Lord brought them up out of the graves and brought them into the land of Israel. Verse, here's the 53rd time, verse 13. Then you'll know that I'm the Lord. I have opened your graves, O my people. I brought you up from your graves. And verse 14, I will put my spirit in you and you shall live and I will place you in your own land. And I personally believe that that's, and, and um, I am not alone in that. That's what uh, evangelicals that are dispensational believe that God is using Israel in their unbelief and in their belligerence and in their whatever else they are, their pride, he's using them to give a climactic moment 
Who's the real God? Allah? Have you ever thought that during the tribulation, how are Christians killed? The same way we're watching them on YouTube clips. Are, are you, I mean, the, you know, all the people ISIS is killing, how are they killing them? Cutting their heads off. How is everyone killed in the tribulation? The Christians. They're beheaded. Isn't that fascinating? It's very fascinating to me. Now, I mean, that's just circumstantial evidence, but it's very interesting. So Ezekiel 36 and 37 talk about the return, the restoration, and then after Israel is in their land, Ezekiel 38 and 39, look, look what Ezekiel 38 and 39 say. Now the word of the Lord came after this life, this, this, these dry bones come to life in 36 and 37. Now the word of the Lord came to me saying, verse 2, Son of man, set your face against Gog and the land of Magog and the prince of Rosh and Meshach and Tubal and prophesy against him and say, Thus says the Lord, I am against you. I will turn you around. I'll put hooks in your jaws. I will lead you out and all of your army and horses and horsemen, all splendidly. And look at verse 5. Persia, Ethiopia, Libya, and on and on and on. You go through all those names. Now, is this literal? I mean, we're talking about geographically identifiable, and, and if you ever want to study something interesting, the names of these groups of people come from uh, what is called the Table of Nations. And um, there are a lot of reasons that I am a creationist, a literal six-day, kind of like um, uh, Exodus 20, God is too. He says, I made the heaven and earth in six days and rest the seventh, and you should work six days and rest the seventh. To three million people, that meant God made the earth in six 24-hour days and rested the seventh 24-hour day, and they're supposed to work in their fields for six 24-hour days and rest the seventh. So that, that is a very simple thing. But in Genesis 10, we have the 70 descendants of Noah, of Shem, Ham, and Japheth, that overspread the world. And if you look at those 70 names from the table of nations in Genesis 10, and if you do your homework, you find that many of those names are actually in the royal libraries of Europe. Actually, in the Danish library, going back to, you know, the the pre-Roman times, you'll find the same names that, that are mentioned here as well as in most of the other countries. So what am I saying about that? Well, what Ezekiel, come on back, I'm going the wrong direction. What, there we go, what Ezekiel 38 and 39 is describing, if you were trying to identify a group of people in the future, it's kind of like what they still do. When I pastored in New England, they would say, I'd say, how do I find your house? they say, well, go to the, where the shell station used to be. I said, what? They said, go to where the shell station used to be. I said, we just moved here. Oh, okay. Well, that corner over there always had a shell station on it. And to all of us who have lived here our whole life, it doesn't matter. That's always where the shell station used to be. What the Lord is saying, I want you to look for where these people that overspread the earth that were called by these names where they live during this time period at the end, that's, what, that's what's going to be the trigger for the end of the, of the world. Uh, and then, by the way, um, Ezekiel 40 to 48, come on, turn off, there we go. Ezekiel the 40 to 48 immediately follows this. See, either you think that the Bible is like a deck of cards that you can just shuffle any way you want, or it was written intentionally. And it's very interesting that this part, the, the return and renewal of Israel, is followed by the attack by the, the prince. By the way, the, the, the word for Rosh, you know, the head, is just another term for the Antichrist. This is going to be the Antichrist people that are going to be coming down and fighting against Israel. But immediately following that is this. And, and what we find in Revelation 20, this temple is tied to this thousand years that God promised that everything I said Israel is going to enjoy that they've never enjoyed because they never obeyed me, I'm going to do for them finally. 
I'm going to make them be the head of all the nations. When was Israel ever the head of all the nations? They're the smallest little piece of the world. And God says they're going to be the chief and the head over all the nations of the world. When has that ever happened? See, all this is future. But let me just take you through before we run out of time. Um, because uh, there we go. Here's a quick chart. This is uh, typical Dallas stuff. The order of events. Uh, Christ was crucified, you know, Christmas, crucifixion, uh, resurrection, the church. Uh, this break here is an indefinite period of time. This is Ezekiel 36 and 37. Israel's reestablished. Uh, the, the church goes out. Why does the church go out? Many reasons. One is 1 Thessalonians 5, 9. God always keeps his word. He says, I have not appointed the church of Jesus Christ for the wrath I'm going to pour out on this world. I'm going to let out every horrific demon creature that I'm keeping in the pit, and you're not going to have to face that horrific wrath. That's what Paul taught the church. Then there seems to be uh, this, this Antichrist making a peace treaty, gives Israel three and a half years of peace. The Antichrist then wants to be worshipped. That's at the midpoint of this seven years. Then there's the most tor terrible, horrible three and a half years the world's ever known where the, where the weather goes wild, where the oceans die, where hailstones weighing 100 pounds crush people. And we are, are in this, uh, what's described in Revelation 19, this banquet where we've made ourselves ready, uh, wearing the, the garments Christ gave us. We come with Christ in Revelation 19, riding on horses to Armageddon, right there, coming with him. And uh, so we have to get up to come with him. And then, after the end of the tribulation period, which ends with Christ's return, Satan is bound. Now you're in Revelation 20. And the sheep and goat judgment that Jesus talked about in Matthew is when he divides the survivors of this, where half of everybody dies in the world, he divides them into the, the rebels, the unbelievers, and the believers, and the believers populate the earth and, and have this kind of like perfect, almost Eden-like environment where there's no poisonous animal, spider, snake, there aren't carnivores. I mean, the lions aren't chasing people around. And there seems to be general health. In fact, Isaiah, about 22% of the Old Testament is about this time period. Uh, Isaiah says that if you only live to be 100 years old, you're like a child. People go, oh, they only live to be 100. What was wrong with them? They're so, you know, that was a short life. Because everyone, it appears, lives the whole millennium. They all live a 1,000 years. It's perfect environment, everyone's eating, and uh, it appears that the, the, most of the curse is kind of held back. But even at the end, um, everyone rebels. By the time you get to Revelation 20, 11 to 15, they surround the holy city, this millennial temple we're going to look at that, that is literal, and the Lord uh, burns them up, and we go into Revelation 21 and 22. Uh, real quickly, that's just an overview uh, if you charted the names in, in Ezekiel 38, here is Ethiopia, here is Libya, Put, and Cush. Those are the names of where, you know, Noah's descendants went. Here's the land of Israel uh, that God sovereignly elected the Jewish people. By the way, the people, the replacement theologians, which is basically the Roman Catholics, most Presbyterians, most Methodists, most Episcopalians, and I could go on and on, but m most Lutherans. The people that say that Israel has been replaced by the church then don't believe in sovereign election because God sovereignly elected Israel, the nation, the descendants of Abraham, not the spiritual children that all of us are, but the physical descendants of Abraham. God sovereignly elected them and promised them all this stuff here in the millennium. He promised them. There's 22% of the Old Testament he promised them he's going to do. And so 
it would be as equally fitting to believe that you can lose your salvation as to believe that Israel can lose their promise of being everything that God said. And so it's really going to happen that Put and Cush and then Gomer and Tagarma, and you could take a lot. Gomer goes all the way toward Germany. Um, Magog, uh, this is the southern part of Russia, and look at that, Persia or Iran are going to come. Now, another way of looking at that is if you look at the table of nations, uh, all of this is the region where the Put uh, families were, the Cush families. Uh, this is Sheba and Dedan. Uh, the Assyrians are here. Uh, Turkey is mentioned. Meshech, Tubal, Beth to Garma. I mean, they didn't have a map, and we didn't get a map in the Bible. Uh, Gomer. But look at little Israel right there with all these enemies coming at them. Now, another way you can look at this uh, is on Google Maps, you know? And here's Sudan and Libya, all coming toward Iran, coming in, Russia, Turkey. Uh, it, it's very interesting that the events going on right now, that's why there's growing unease in the world. Because we've got the, right now we've got the Muslim world fighting itself. You know, the Shia and the Sunni. And the only thing that unites the Muslims is if you can just get them focused on Israel, they won't fight each other. But if you can't get them focused on Israel, they fight each other. And so if someone can figure out how to get them to stop fighting each other and focus on what they're supposed to be doing, annihilating Israel and Christians, by the way, then you'll have this attack. Now, what's really interesting is there might be... Oh, there's another one, another view of the same, using the same uh, geographic areas. This is what's really interesting. Psalm 83 talks about another attack on Israel. Uh, and it, it has a different group. If you look at, at verses 6 to 8 in Psalm, eight, Psalm 83, uh, the tents of Edom, which would, would be kind of like Palestinians, southern Jordanians, and that's a real hotbed for terrorism right now. Ishmaelites, that's the Saudis. Ishmael is the father of the Arabs. Moab, the geographic area of Moab, would again be the central Jordan, which is what the Palestinians are, because uh, Israel was part of Jordan uh, before the 48 independence. The Hagrenes, you say, what is that? That's the descendants of Hagar, the Egyptian matriarch. That's Egyptians. They seem to get in on this. Gebal, uh, those people live north of Israel, which would be close to Hezbollah and the northern Lebanese. Ammon, that's right across from Jerusalem. That's uh, the, the people that live by Ammon, you know, the Palestinians and northern Jordanians. Amalek, Amalek, the Amalekites, that's the Sinai area, and that's where they lived in the old days. Philistia, the region where the Philistines lived, is where Hamas is now in the Gaza Strip. Tyre, that's a refugee camp today. Again, that's Hezbollah and southern Lebanon. And then, of course, you have Syria, which are the Syrians and northern Iraqis. And it appears this group, and by the way, this group has never attacked Israel simultaneously because they didn't live at the same time. The Syrians, the Philistines, the Ammonites, the Moabites, the Ishmaelites, the Edomites, these were not concurrently in power enough to attack Israel. And Psalm 83, not saying that we're going to resurrect Edomites and Ishmaelites and Moabites, but their descendants, which is very interesting. You notice that this does not have Iran. And this does not have what we would call the Soviets or even the Muslim states of Central, Europe or Central Asia. This is a different group. So we're not sure uh, exactly. God didn't send a map or a chart uh, into the back of the Bible. But it's never been quite like it is right now. And it could settle down or it couldn't. But that's why I take regular trips to Israel, because I know Israel's there when the dust settles. So if you want to be safe, go to Israel, okay?